is set. The social and uh, environmental uh, safeguards issue uh, have been addressed. Also, uh, as I, I said, the decree to, for the indemnization of uh, population uh, affected by the project have been signed. So everything is ready on our side to see the project uh, start. Like we heard in our lead story, the Newtown Airport quarter in Douala 2 municipality predominantly occupied by Muslims, will be demolished in the days ahead. All those living there are being advised by the government delegate to the Douala City Council, Fritz Ntoni Ntoni, to make hay while the sun shine. We have details with Jalo Buba in this report. In the heavily attended meeting by a cross-section of the Muslims living in Douala at the invitation of the government delegate to the Douala City Council, Dr. Fritz Ntoni Ntoni, had two points on its agenda. This way, the planned demolition of Newtown Airport neighborhood and the closure of three hectare portion of the public cemetery within the same neighborhood to make way for the expansion of the city of Douala. This neighborhood, located close to the Douala International Airport, is considered a risk zone unfit for inhabitation. The government delegate has therefore called on the Muslims community to collaborate. He further explained that the EMAC demolition was supposed to have taken place since, but he decided to delay it to allow the Muslims end fasting during the month of Ramadan. It should be noted that of late the city council is wiping out quarters inhabited without proper authorization. Newtown Airport is therefore not an exception. The mayor of Buya subdivision, Ekema Patrick, who was reportedly abducted recently by Ambazonian fighters, was, has disclaimed the allegations. In an, in an exclusive interview with DBS television over the weekend, Mr. Ekema said he knows all those who went him down and promises to deal with them. Let's hear him on the mic of our staffman, Nuno Fotue. If they talk of uh, assassinating or kidnapping the mayor of Buya, I know. It is something very local. It is often said in a dialect that if your father, your mother, your brother, your sister does not expose you to witches and wizards, nobody will be witches you. I know where my problems are coming from. They are internal problems. They are internal problems within. And uh, on the 22nd of September, I, I had an attack at my residence and my property and that they were looking for me. I complained to the judiciary, citing names. Some of them are here, they have immunity, and they go out in the public and say, and we are lawmakers, we have immunities. These are the perpetrators of all these nasty acts. Look, eh, it is high time I'm going to retaliate. They should know, they should be informed that we are aware, we are well informed, and nobody has monopoly of kidnapping. They have, they, have, they have done that because looking for ransoms to meet up with what they have probably would have lost in some other institutions they were managing where they thought there was milk and butter. And uh, they, today they find the situation very, very degrading and denigrating. So they get into alliances with others, with those kind of a dental formula like a bulldog. Uh, others who are frustrated, either they were managing a local institution and today it's not there. I see some of them lamenting that the government has kept them in coal. They should wait for me. I will come back to them. If we don't trace the route, we cannot solve the problem. And I'm going to... We hope the route to all this uh, is traced in a normal way. We still talk about the end of the month of Ramadan and this time we are in Dawara where Muslim faithfuls gathered to thank God for guiding them throughout the 30 days of fasting. They equally prayed for divine assistance in solving the socio-political crisis in the northwest and southwest regions. Nimpa Francis reports from Dawara in Bamenda. The central mosque in Dawara was jammed to capacity by Muslim faithfuls who gathered to offer thanks to Allah for guiding them all through the 30 days long fasting. The Imam, assisted by Sayyidu Musa, prayed Allah to grant those in authority with wisdom 
which will help them take decisions that will solve the present political crisis plaguing the Anglophone regions of Cameroon. I don't understand. I want to say, may we sit down together, sit down, look, we we'll follow our book, and we we'll follow our book for them. He pointed out that Islam is a religion of peace. With Muslims or Christians, may they be one together, may they be the brother there. Nobody say this one a Christian or this one a Muslim, na be be na be have, na be be have some kind way, you know, good. And so they have prayed for peace and prosperity to reign in the nation. Amongst the hundreds of faithfuls was the chief executive officer, CEO of the Baba Group Company, Al Haji Baba Dampulu who received special prayers and blessings for his humanitarian endeavors. Dining and whining continued in homes to mark the feast of Ramadan in Dawara. Over in the East region, the Manjo subdivision in that part of the country will in the days ahead be in possession of a cassava factory. This is a donation from the Cameroon Women Business Leaders Association which will facilitate the transformation of this cash crop into Gari. Staff Lady Wamba Tansi Mirabel completes that story. <laughs> The sounds and rhythm of this music is denotive of joy, happiness and total satisfaction. The Cameroon Women Business Association have indeed put a beaming smile on the faces of the local population of Manjo in Betwa. They will in the days ahead rehabilitate the sole cassava factory used in transforming Gary, a cash crop greatly cultivated in this part of the country. Welcomed by the governor of the region, the regional delegate of small and medium-sized enterprises, amongst others, they express satisfaction for such a timely initiative, which they say will go a long way to boost the country's economy. An initiative both the farmer and the local population had yearned for, but due to financial lapses, were spearbound to use alternative methods. During this visit, the local farmers presented their challenges and projects to the president of their August guest, Adelaide Ngela, who told them to work hand in glove with their association for better results. A win-win project, she added, which her association is expecting to push through with about 40% of the task and the farmers provide the raw materials and manpower. If all that has been put on papers is being implemented practically, then this factory will employ over 500 workers, thus curbing the rate of unemployment in Betwa and in Cameroon as a whole. We remain in the East region. Militants of the CPDM party in the Opanyong division held a meeting over the weekend to express their motion of support to the head of state, President Paul Bia, in line with the upcoming presidential election. We have details with Nde Vanessa. Their peers from other regions, CPD and militants of the Upper Young Division have called on the President of the Republic, Paul Bia, to stand for the 2018 presidential elections. It was in Abongbang during the evaluation of registration on the electoral list that the militant expressed their motion of unconditional support. This delegation was led by Senator Benjamin Amama Amama, who on this occasion evaluated the preparedness of the funeral of their former boss and to ensure the militants of the ruling party have registered. The evaluation of the registration of our militant and the electoral list. We are very satisfied to see that the instruction given by the authority of the party has been applied and we have taken advantage of this meeting to renew our appeal to the head of state, His Excellency Fulvia, to be our candidate for the upcoming uh, presidential election. It was a brief meeting where militants and well-wishers of CPDM of the Opanyong joined to pledge their motion to stand behind the president during the 2018 presidential elections. We apologize for that poor quality of the sound in that report. 
The international community commemorated the Day of the African Child over the weekend. The day falls every 16th of June, and Cameroon's Consumer Foundation for Cocoa organized activities to talk about the nutritional habit of African children. We have details with Seka Zubairatu in the following report. Once again, the African child has been on the top chart. This time around, the talk was on the nourishment of the African child. According to Fokako, the African child is malnourished, reason why parents, African children, came together in a seminar for a better understanding of what child nourishing is all about. There, it was observed that most African children do not take milk. Even when they do, it is less nourishing as prescribed. So much talk was based on how and what natural or artificial milk is necessary for the well-being of every child. We apologize again for that break up in that communication. We now talk news out of the country. Just days ahead of Wednesday's UN's designated World Refugee Day, hundreds of migrants have arrived in Spain. Three ships brought more than 600 migrants to the port of Valencia in Sunday, and after the Spanish Coast Guards on Friday and Saturday rescued more than 900 migrants in the Gibraltar Strait. We have details of that story with VOA correspondent. Humanitarian ship the Aquarius, aided by Italian vessels the Dattilo and the Orione, brought 629 migrants to Spain on Sunday. They were rescued off the coast of Libya last week from smugglers' boats and were accepted by Spain after both Italy and Malta refused them. Sunday's arrivals add to the 930 migrants rescued by Spain's Coast Guard in the Gibraltar Straits since Friday. The Spanish government has determined that these people are to be granted an extraordinary entry due to humanitarian reasons for 45 days. Spanish authorities said they would grant asylum to applicants according to the Spanish law, and France offered to take eligible migrants who wish to go there. Germany has been silent regarding the latest wave of migrants after the government's previously welcoming policy brought into question the future of Chancellor Angela Merkel's leadership. Southern European countries are getting weary of the huge waves of migrants landing on their shores and want an EU policy that would ensure a fair share of the burden. We must create European processing centers in the countries of origin and transit. That way we can anticipate and accelerate the identification procedures and request for European asylum. Pope Francis on Sunday called on countries to come to an agreement while urging local communities to embrace the desperate people. I hope that the countries involved in these processes will reach an agreement to ensure, with responsibility and humanity, the assistance and the protection of those who are forced to leave their country. Each of us is also called to get close to refugees, meet with them, and value their contribution to the community. A European Union law known as the Dublin Regulation stipulates that member states through which the asylum seekers first enter the bloc are are responsible for their asylum claims. That puts a heavy burden on Mediterranean countries such as Greece, Malta and Italy, where most of the migrants first land. Zlatica Hoke, VOA News, Washington. We still talk about immigration and this time in the United States of America, where lawmakers in Washington are refocused on immigration as the Trump administration defends the separation of some immigrant children from their parents at the U.S.-Mexican border. Details once more with VOA correspondent. Once a rare practice, federal agents now routinely separate families seeking asylum or attempting to enter the United States illegally. Roughly 2,000 minors are being housed in facilities like this converted Walmart in Texas while their parents' immigration status is decided.
Video released by the U.S. government shows what appear to be humane conditions, but furor over the Trump administration's zero-tolerance policy for unauthorized border arrivals has surged. This is horrifying, and we're taking kids as, long, as young as four months, I saw, one, two years old. That's an atrocity. The policy is designed to frighten the parents by taking away their kids, traumatizing the kids, and they think that that will serve as a deterrent for people exercising a basic human right, which is to uh, ask for asylum. President Donald Trump continues to view America's immigration debate through the lens of public safety, often pointing to foreign-born members of a vicious Central American gang. Thousands of MS-13 gang members who have infiltrated our country so illegally and so violently live by their gruesome motto, kill, rape, control. And the White House insists it is just following the law. The children can be taken care of quickly, beautifully, and immediately. The Democrats forced that law upon our nation. Immigration experts and many legal scholars say, in fact, the administration is interpreting U.S. immigration law as no other administration has. Democrats have condemned both the policy and Trump's rationale for pursuing it. In the world, there's a recognition that people can seek asylum, except apparently not in the United States. Keep on bringing it down. Emotions are being stoked as the House of Representatives prepares to vote this week on two competing Republican immigration reform bills. We said from the beginning we want the House to debate immigration reform in a serious, meaningful way, and it looks like that is happening for the first time in nearly a decade. Both bills would provide legal status to hundreds of thousands of undocumented immigrants brought to America as children, make sweeping changes to legal immigration, and boost U.S. border security. It is unclear either will attract enough votes to pass. Michael Bowman, VOA News, Washington. And we talk sports, this time football with intellectually deficient competition that has been going on in Yaoundé. Cameroon has emerged champions in this year's competition for intellectually deficient that was organized in Yaoundé. They trashed their Gabonese counterparts five goals to one. It should be noted that in their first outing, they were beaten by Gabon and this gave them the lesson they needed to galvanize the boys and bring them to confront Gabon again in the finals. Here is an excerpt of the coach, Azefak Verdo who gave their modus operandi that led them to this victory. We are quite interested, we are quite happy. The results came, that is what we expected. And we thank God our work has paid today. We were grateful because they respected the instructions. All the technical and the tactical aspects that we lacked last time has been corrected and the, the goals came in their numbers. The story of Cameroon is that they respected to the least the instructions given, technically, tactically, especially at the front, those guys could make the result, could put down balls, throw balls, and because the, uh, the Kagabonese team played well balls. So I observed that last time and asked my guys to put the ball on the floor, and when the ball was on the front, the difficulty came, and we exploited that opportunity, and the goals came in their numbers. That is the bit we put together in this edition of the news. A news in which we heard about the Cameroon chart bilateral relationship as we have in the images there which is being strengthened with the imminent construction of a bridge over the Logon River to link the two friendly countries. Arrangements to that effect were finalized today in Yaoundé during a meeting that brought in experts from both countries. And equally, we heard about the Muslim community living in Douala that meets with the government delegates Fritz and Tony Tony to discuss the imminent demolition of Newtown Airport, a neighborhood in Douala 2 subdivision in the near future. The delegates equally used the opportunity to discuss about the closure of a close to three hectare of a public cemetery in the same neighborhood. And like we heard in the brief in this about World Cup going on, the match pitching Tunisia versus England is still ongoing with the scoreline situation still one goal on either side. That is the, 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 the package we had for this evening. The next newscast will be coming up at 9 p.m. in the French language with Luke Serge Didier Nang. As for me, we will be together again, same time for what would have made news. Until then, good night.